also joined, in addition to Sharif Abdelkadus in Gaza City, by Dr. Mads Gilbert, a Norwegian doctor providing medical assistance in Gaza, recently submitted a report to the U.N. on the state of the Gaza health sector this year. Can you talk about what's happening from where you are right now in Shifa? We didn't want you to wait. We understand that there are many people waiting to see you. Yes, I have unfortunate and breaking news to you in the United States. About 10 minutes ago, Israeli tanks shelled the hospital, Al-Aqsa Hospital, in Darbala, which is in the middle zone of Gaza. Four were killed, mainly patients treated in the surgical department, and 15 are injured. This is not the first, unfortunately, attack on hospitals, but the Israeli army is now directly shelling hospitals and killing uh, patients and civilians. This, of course, is in violation of all international rules, and it is completely incomprehensible for me why the Israeli army is not stopped when they attack hospitals, ambulances, and civilian populations. This has to stop, and Mr. Obama has to step up and say enough is enough now. Dr. Gilbert, uh, the invasion, the ground invasion started on Thursday. What kinds of injuries have you been seeing since then? Well, I, I'd just like to repeat that 10 minutes ago, the Israeli army shelled the Al-Aqsa hospital. This is a very dramatic step up in the situation. We have so far had 3,200 injured in Gaza. Among these, 1,000 are children and 600 are women. That is far more than half. Uh, 515 has been ki have been killed, among them 120 children and 50 women. The types of injuries that we're seeing now, and, and the hospital is again being crowded uh, in the emergency with new attacks, are shrapnel, blast injuries, burns, and uh, what you can see from artillery shell bombing. Uh, lots of children still. We, I had a bleach hope that it would be a quiet morning. That has not been fulfilled. It's been very hectic, and the ambulances keep uh, running in. However, the worst night so far was the Sashaya night, the night before yesterday, when the hospital received at least 400 injured and 73 dead. This was truly a massacre, and, and the injuries were, were, were just uh, horrible, as your correspondent just mentioned. Children came in without heads and, and, and totally dismantled uh, by, by, the, uh, by the shelling of the uh, residential areas. Uh, Dr. Mads Gilbert, you came in from Norway to help the people of Gaza. Um, Secretary of State John Kerry has just called on your foreign minister um, to help to negotiate a ceasefire. Uh, apparently, he's flying, I believe, to Egypt. Can you talk about the significance of this and Norway's role, your country's role? The significance, from a medical point of view, there is one overwhelming need in Gaza now, and that is to stop the Israeli bombardment of Gaza. It is, it is absolutely devastating. It is much harder than I have seen before in 2006, 2009, and 2012, the attacks then. It is targeting, obviously, residential areas and now also hospitals. Of course, a ceasefire has to be brokered uh, immediately. Uh, but it has, of course, to be done in a way that is uh, safeguarding the interest of the Palestinian people and not only the interest of the future powers and the occupants. Uh, the Palestinian people are not yielding. They are standing tall, and the staff in Shifa, who are the ones carrying the weight, uh, like the other hospitals, I'm only a small, very, very small part of this, they are not intended to, to pull the white flag. There is no way Gaza will, will raise the white flag. These are people who are dignified. They know their rights. And they say, this is our land. We're going to live here. No, 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 no power. Even if they try to kill us all, we will not surrender. So the ceasefire will save thousands of lives in Gaza. We have now half a thousand killed and 3,200 injured. This has to stop. Immediate ceasefire. Israel has to stop the bombing. And the siege of Gaza must be lifted immediately. We don't have supplies anymore.
Dr. Gilbert, uh, The Guardian newspaper is reporting that the Israeli military is using flechette shells in the offensive on Gaza, weapons described as illegal under rules of humanitarian law. Um, the way they're described is they explode in the air above a target, sending out a cone of thousands of tiny steel darts, um, uh, small darts. Have you seen any of those um, wounds at, at Shifa? Well, I have been suspecting the same, because many of the wounds we see are precisely small fragment wounds, and they are uh, very hard to, to clean and to, to remove the, the small metal particles. If these are flechette bombs, I cannot confirm it 100 percent, but there is no doubt that a large number of the injuries we're getting now are fragmentation injuries from sort different sources of fragmentation. Uh, it could be uh, an artillery shell, and it could well be a uh, cassette uh, explosive. Hey, Dr. Gilbert, uh, the bombing of the hospital that, that you've just, uh, uh, this news that you've just broken here on the show, uh, last week we spoke to the director at the Al-Wafa Hospital. He received a phone call from the Israeli military uh, telling him he was going to be targeted, suggesting, of course, then, as Juan Gonzalez pointed out on the show, that the hospital was deliberately targeted. Any indication that now this hospital was deliberately attacked? Uh, <laughs> that's a funny question. I mean, it's a hospital. It's well marked on the map. Everybody knows about it. The Israelis know every single building in Gaza. They know the, the mobile numbers to all the inhabitants. They know everything about Gaza. Of course they know that Al-Aqsa is a hospital. There is absolutely no doubt. Of course they know that this is a hospital filled with patients. And to make it even worse, you know, the hospitals in the south of Gaza are overwhelmed by patients running in because it's impossible to, to uh, distribute the patients between north and south because it's so unsafe to travel uh, in the ambulances. Of course they knew they were showing a hospital and it's just reported now on the news that there are actually five killed in this shelling of Al-Aqsa Hospital in Darabala in uh, the midsection of Gaza. And of course, shelling hospitals, shelling ambulances, shelling civilians all amount to war crimes and this is a war crime in the making. Dr. Mads Gilbert, I want to thank you for being with us uh, again, a Norwegian doctor providing medical assistance in Gaza. Um, uh, as we turn back to Sharif Abdokudus, who is in Gaza City right now. Um, uh, and I should say that Dr. Mads Gilbert submitted a report to the UN on the state of the Gaza health sector in 2014, even before the uh, Israeli assault on Gaza began. Um, Sharif, if you can talk about um, among the civilians that have died. A paramedic has died. Um, another journalist has died. Yes, Amy. Uh, as I said, it was very hard for ambulances to get into Shijai uh, yesterday, but uh, the paramedic drivers here are extremely brave, and many of them uh, went into uh, Shijai to try and retrieve people, to retrieve the wounded. Uh, and one of them was, was hit in a direct hit. The, uh, the picture of the ambulance is of a charred, twisted uh, hunk of metal. Uh, and so uh, he was killed. And a, a journalist, a Palestinian journalist, was also killed. Uh, as well, uh, a photojournalist, I believe. And he was, uh, you know, this came a day after the uh, government press office in Israel sent an email to foreign correspondents telling them that uh, Hamas frequently exploits uh, journalists as human shields and that is the Israeli government will not be responsible uh, for any uh, damage or injury that uh, journalists sustain uh, while field reporting. And then the next day, a journalist was killed. Uh, let me also say, Amy, that uh, the number of displaced uh, is, is really, uh, it's, it's much higher than it was in 2008, 2009 in that Israeli operation. Uh, there's just, there's nowhere for people to go anymore. Uh, before the Shija'iya attack, the uh, Anwar on numbers was, was 60,000 displaced. At the end of the day, it was 80,000 displaced. The UN was opening up uh, different schools uh, for people to come, and uh, they come with nothing. They come with maybe a blanket or a pillow, but usually nothing else. And they don't know when they'll go home. They don't know if they have a home when they go back or whether it'll be destroyed. Uh, so, and uh, you know, we talk often about the dead, but the vast, vast numbers of wounded, 3,000 wounded, these are not minor injuries. We're talking amputations. 
Uh, we're talking deep shrapnel wounds and of course the psychological terror that's inflicted uh, especially on the uh, the uh, uh, children of Gaza uh, will have deep lasting effects uh, by the UN's own count uh, 60,000 children in Gaza are in need of some kind of psychological treatment so uh, these are these are effects that will last uh, for, for many generations uh, and it's not just uh, something that will never end and uh, you know as I'm speaking to you uh, there's been shelling behind me in uh, eastern parts of Gaza City uh, missile strikes that are happening I, I can hear drones over me right now as we speak uh, so so you know this is something that uh, that the, the Gaza Strip is bracing for for more bloodshed still the fighting in Shejaiya, that's where 13 Israeli soldiers were killed. What do you understand about the, the battle that uh, occurred between uh, militants and the Israeli soldiers? It, it looks like they put up a, a considerable fight. Well, it's very hard to independently verify anything. What does appear to have occurred is that, uh, according to different sources, is that uh, either a tank or some kind of armored vehicle was uh, attacked and destroyed by uh, the Qassam Brigades, the armed wing of Hamas, and that when the rescue team, the Israeli rescue team, went in, four of them were killed as well. So it, it really looks, and uh, speaking to different analysts here, political and military analysts, local ones, uh, saying that uh, Al Qassam is a much more uh, prepared militarily than it was in 2008 and 9, that it learned its lessons uh, from 2008 and 9, uh, that there is a Gaza under Gaza uh, with tunnels and a network where uh, they operate. And uh, they seem to have, uh, this seems to be true, that they fired many rockets into Israel uh, and uh, the Israeli military doesn't seem to be able to, to uh, kill the militants. They're killing civilians and children. Um, and, uh, you know, they've, they've, uh, there's two very big uh, bangs just happened behind me. They're continuing, it sounds like naval artillery. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they continue to uh, pop up into Israel proper through these tunnels uh, that cross the border, which Netanyahu says is the whole point of the ground invasion to destroy them. So it does seem to be that uh, uh, they almost want the Israelis to come in so they can be able to fight them. If you just look over to the right here in the distance back there, I believe that is uh, Shijaiya in the back. You can see on the horizon uh, massive uh, strike there, maybe two or three, uh, and the smoke is just billowing up. And this is, uh, I believe, still, yes, Shaja'iya, where uh, we had that massacre yesterday. Uh, so these are, these are the sounds we're hearing, and this is just uh, a couple of kilometers from where we're standing right now. Sharif, thank you for being with us. Sharif abdel uh, Democracy Now! correspondent, is filing reports for The Nation magazine, and we'll link to those reports, speaking to us from Gaza City. When we come back from break, we'll be joined by Raji Sarani, a Palestinian human rights leader, won the Robert F. Kennedy Prize for Human Rights, as well as the Right Livelihood Award. He'll speak to us from Gaza as well. Stay with us.